So how you been, man? Uh, just got back yesterday from um, Arkansas. I was up there for the last <clears throat> week of the semester teaching classes and then, you know, took nice. a little bit of time to go um, to go fish the White River and um, yeah. Awesome. Are you, are you a teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm a, I'm a professor, teach history, you know, at a small liberal arts college. So how was the fishing out there? You know, I just like, I went, um, on the white river one day, um, one of my, my good friends, his, um, his buds is getting into the guiding game up there. Mm -hmm. Um, but unlike a lot of the kind of guides that fish on the white, he'll throw streamers as well. Like a lot of them are just like pretty much nymphing year round except for maybe one or two months out of um out of the season um yeah yeah, yeah. he was like nymphing know. always catches man for yeah, oh i know oh i know i i totally understand it um but nobody's been really pulling any big browns out of that river recently yeah. and by big i'm saying 20 plus um but between the two of us we put three in the boat there were over 20 wow yeah and um, it was all on streamers. I mean, we were throwing big, you know, drunken disorderlies, like with one odd hooks. And um, nice. and beyond that, I mean, I just fished like a local pond, um, very slow. Bass were not, I mean, any of them. I mean, you could see them in the shallows and they would follow a fly and kind of like hang out, but they never really like committed. Um, yeah. And I just, I wasn't like super serious fishing, but I also fished down below, like, a, I guess you would call it a runoff on the white. And uh, there was nothing there except for um, for carp. I could see them down on, like, the rocks below. Just, yeah. Um, if, they'll, if they'll bite, they're tough. But, yeah. Yeah. How, how you think, doing, Ryan? Good. How you doing, Sean? Good, man. I like your hat collection. Oh, it yeah, does. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got, like, a couple hats. I wear a hat 24-7, and this one one of my favorites but the the patch came off and i i just left it so now i've got a a non non-patched hat but those are <laughs> pretty cool I, I try to get one for like everything i go after like i just came back from the flats of tampa and i was going after red so i wore red today nice so so uh uh brian here uh also lives in florida and uh and ryan here lives in florida as well so you guys are both yep. from florida um yeah ryan man i've seen some of your fish there's some incredible stuff you always send me pictures and uh mm. i'm jealous man I'm jealous i wish i could catch a uh, tarpon I, I i there's some out here but it's rare so i mean yeah it, i mean florida's their home they're they're all over the place really if it's i mean in some places they just live all year round so you can just go after them they're not always huge you know but any size tarpon is fun Oh, absolutely, man. Especially, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, if you catch one of the smaller ones on like a 12 weight, it might not be that fun. But if you're fishing no. like a six or eight weight, I mean, it's got to be oh, a yeah. blast, you know. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, basic, I go with an eight weight. If I'm going to do any kind of inshore fishing, tarpon or otherwise, and it's always a blast, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Brian, you uh, fish, you fish tarpon a couple times, right? No, oh, no, okay. I, I don't, I don't have the patience or the, um, <laughs> I, I don't like futility um, <laughs> because they're, they're migratory fish up here. They start in May and go through July, but it's kind of like, as somebody explained to me once, it's like sitting on the worst deer stand on a, on a hunting lease, because up here you're sitting on, on uh, migratory routes. And I mean, you can sit out there in the hot sun and just, you know, not see them you know and then you throw at them and they just and i know um one dude that fished pretty much every weekend this past summer never got one take wow. not a single take um and i just i don't know and, and and tarpon dudes like have a have a kind of reputation like they think they're like the premium like people on the face of the earth uh in a way that like I, you probably met like an old um sean like an old like purist dry fly guy that thinks streamer fishing is kind of an abomination and um oh, yeah. this is different but yeah i mean you can get with guides and like a fish will roll and they'll say that you missed it and it's it's just it's not um it, and i mean for me buying like an 11 weight and like targeting a 100 pound fish like it's just 
I, I don't have the setup and I'm in a kayak too. So, I mean, like I've got to have somebody else with me and I'm going for a ride, you know, yeah. uh, they're going to pull me about a mile or so out. So it's something else you have to be kind of aware of. And then like a lot of the areas where I'd fish, there's a lot of other people there too. I mean, there's just like guides, like up like three or four miles all up uh, and they get real territorial and real pissy as if like, you know, they can colonize that part of the water, you know, as if it's their reef or they have a structure that they built. Like I could understand that. Like if some dude went out and built his own reef and structure, I've got no problem. Like, you know, saying, okay, man, you built it. It's fine. But like, I'm just sitting on the edge of a, of a shoal, like where a channel is. And some dude's like, that's my spot. It's like, no, it's actually not. I, I, I beat you here. I just got here earlier. And, and we and, have that. Ooh. We kind of have that issue here in Texas where people like if they um, own land, like on a river, for instance, they'll, they'll think that they own the water, but the law states. And now there's like three rivers in all of Texas where they actually do own the land under the, the, the river. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority, it's the high water mark. And so a lot of them will come out with shotguns and be like, hey, get off my property. And it's like, I'm, I'm in the water. I'm legally allowed to be here. I'm just walking through. And yeah, so I, I get you. I mean, it happens. But, yeah, um, but, but I don't know. You, you, you catch tons of tarpon, Ryan. I always see you with them. But you, you must be more, uh, are you on like the Gulf side or what, what part of? Uh, most of the tarpon I catch are on the, uh, the east side. So okay. actually, uh, I go after them in like the Indian River and uh, Mosquito Lagoon and stuff like that. It's just uh, more accessible for me because I honestly do all of my fishing on foot. So everything you see me catch waiting. is all on foot. Yeah, either waiting or, you know, right offshore or whatever. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and you can't wait. I mean, you could uh, wait for tarpon, but um, where I fish, but you probably wouldn't want to on an incoming tide because of the bulls that run through the, the uh, you know, it, 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 it's kind of dodgy. Um, but they yeah. have like, a, they have baby tarpon here. They have juvies. Um, yeah. And a hot spot is in the spring. They, mm -hmm. You can see them in the spring swirling around and they look red almost. Mm -hmm. um, and like most people that, that know about the spot uh, that I've heard about aren't fly fishermen. So they throw everything, you know, conventional they have at them and they never get any takes. But, um, you know, I've, I always want to go there. I just never, never think of it. And I mean, you have to have like a, a pedal drive kayak, which I have, or, or a boat. Um, and especially if you're trying to, you know, you get out there on the, kind of the wrong tide like you're fishing incoming, uh, like a, an outgoing tide. I mean, it rips through there. So yeah, um, but, it kind of so makes are it you more cold. like on the north end of Florida or are you? Yeah, I'm the Northwest. So I'm in the, I'm in the big band and I fish pretty much anything like. Um, so different there for sure. Panama yeah. city. Yeah. I mean that, that's the extreme furthest. I usually fish like about 45 minutes away from me and then about an hour East, um, which is still in the Gulf right it's um and they've got and, and the cool thing about uh further east is they certain areas like are, are less fished um mm -hmm. but you still need a need a boat but um some areas are overfished and you've got a lot of uh, rednecks from georgia that come down and just like slaughter slaughter the trout but um there's still some big gators that that survive all their you know death machinery floating around yeah i mean there's some some big 30 inchers and and you know 26 and over um and they'll get into the rivers we we get some gators here in texas but nothing like florida i know it's uh i always get a little worried being out there with you talking about bull sharks and stuff and we get that here too um for instance there's a uh a corpus christi bay that um is there they uh they say it's like a breeding ground for bull sharks and so there's a lot of them there I mean, yeah. nothing in the, I don't, I'm sure there's some in the 30, you know, foot mark, but most of them are, are smaller, but still, I mean, I, I, I kind of makes me a little worried, but if I'm on like the, the Bay side or the Gulf side, um, I'm a little less, uh, less worried, but I always, I, I do, it's always in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh man, is today the day I'm going to get eaten? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, even in the kayak I've had, I couldn't tell, but I mean, it was, I look down, like just just right there, and it's either a nurse shark or a bull shark, and it's a five or six footer cruising right Ooh. under me because because I'm up um, the water like a lot of times on these these flats against the um, the grass, 
you know, there'll be predators just chilling there, just roll. And that's what it was. Yeah. And I was just sitting there, like, I think I was uh, changing a fly or something, just looked down and was like, oh, that uh, that I, makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I, I would need to bring a change of pants. So <laughs> I've had one. I've uh, There's a reason why I don't bring a stringer on a kayak too. And that was a pretty uh, harrowing situation. I had like two trout and two Spanish Macs on a, on a stringer. I was fishing conventional gear and I heard this loud splash. And then, you know, I just saw some like turgid water, not far from me. I mean, like maybe six feet. And I saw the fish like fluttering. And then, you know, I saw the dorsal and the, um, and his tail fin. And I mean, there's about a three foot gap between them, if not more. So it's a, it's a six foot shark. Nice. So, that's, that's, uh, not nice. Actually. That's scary. <laughs> Do you have any run-ins Ryan with sharks down there? Um, the only two run-ins I've ever had are with, uh, well, I think they call them like the space sharks or whatever they're, uh, the, just the, like the mini hammerhead looking sharks. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, spinner bonnet heads. Um, yeah. Bonnet heads. Yeah. Bonnet yeah. heads. And then, uh, spinner sharks. Uh, and that's only if I'm, uh, surf fishing, but the spinner sharks are all in the surf. So, yeah. Well, I, I went down, um, a couple, I, I released that video, I think, and we saw a couple spinner sharks jumping. It was actually what they call sharkathon. They go out to the beach and, and fish for shark there it's like a tournament thing and uh but we were fishing next to a bunch of people fishing for sharks and some guy hooked into one i mean those spinners man they can jump i mean they, it was oh, like, oh yeah like there's 10 like or 15 that. times out crazy. there just yeah big too i was surprised mm -hmm. like it looked yeah, oh yeah uh, i was like huh I'm, I'm i'm good i don't think i'm gonna go to the third cut on this beach right now i'm gonna <laughs> stay pretty pretty close <laughs> one time um, we, we fished um conventionally about like seven miles offshore and all the, you know, we were fishing for cobia. So, um, and there, there, there are some that hang out there, but um, as soon as the bait would hit the water, I, it just like the, uh, we were fishing live pinfish. And I mean, they would just start flying right to the boat and snap off. And we were like, what the hell is it a shark? And I remember earlier, I thought they were porpoises like flying out of the water. You know what I mean? Knocking um, like mullet out. But I don't know. It was like, you know, um, there was spinner sharks. And I know that because one, I could see its eyes. I mean, it did the full, like, you know, 720 revolution. I mean, it's a six to eight foot shark right there. And I mean, the water splashed inside the boat. That's how, that's how, <laughs> how close it was. Um, that's but, freaky. But, yeah, it, 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 it was. Um, we, um, I used to work on boats in Port Aransas, which is kind of close to Texas. So I, I was a deckhand on a boat and we would go out pretty deep, uh, pretty far out, maybe a mile, mile and a half, two miles or whatever, out to go fish for <clears throat> a number of different fish. Um, snapper season was a big season. We go out there um, and we hooked into a 300 plus pound um, thresher, I think it was. And yeah, it, it was it was nuts. Um, I mean, it took that guy forever to bring in, but the captain comes running back as soon as it came up and he had a 45 with him and he just boom, Ooh. boom, like three or four shots right in the, the top of the head. And that was it. And that was the end of that. They brought on board. They, I, I, I don't know. I've never eaten Thresher, but I, I imagine it's okay. They're supposed I, to be good. That and Mako were supposed to be like the better eating sharks, I thought. But they kept it. So uh, that was, that was uh, pretty exciting. So yeah, I was like, oh, I, if I fall in overboard and I'm going to, and get eaten so <laughs> those things are gnarly so um how's fishing been for you ryan um i mean this week has been a little slow but i'd say the last two weeks have just been fire it, i mean here in florida i know a lot of people go oh the the cold weather no the cold weather is great that that certain species they just start to thrive all the redfish all the sheephead black drum I mean, even if you're a freshwater guy, really, you know, the bass and crappie and all kinds of stuff. I mean, every, you know, just certain species really start to thrive. And even the snook, they start to pile up in the backwater. And, you know, mm -hmm. even the bigger ones, you know, you're going to catch 25, 30 inch snook out in the back. Oh, oh yeah. Fly rod, man. Those things fight. Oh, it's it's awesome. The only thing you have to be careful of is, you know, what kind of tippet you're using, because their mouths are just going to tear apart, you know, your leader. They're just going to rip to shreds. I mean, I, I tend to use like a 20 pound, especially if I'm going for a snook, because if I'm not careful, sometimes, you know, you dog it a little too much, they'll pop it. No problem. Yeah. Do, do you ever do like a steel leader? 
Um, the only time I do steel eater is if I'm gonna do sharks or barracuda. Uh, for steel, I don't use anything else. You fly fish for shark and barracuda? Uh, the I've only fished for barracuda once, and I was in Biscayne Bay. And then for the sharks, I think twice. And to be honest with you, every time I go fly fishing for shark, they end up breaking me off whether I have a steel eater or not. Yeah, man, those teeth they they can. They can do damage. The spinner sharks, they just, they take it, because it's always the spinner sharks here. They just take it, they wrap it around their bodies, and the steel leader is only, I don't know, maybe like three yeah. feet, if that, and doesn't matter. Pop, it's over. Yeah, and their skin is kind of almost like abrasive, too. I mean, it's oh, almost like sandpaper, really so. bad, yeah. If you, you know, put your hand the reverse way on a shark, you're going to hurt your hand for sure. Yeah. Everyone thinks of them as like slimy or something, and no, uh, they're pretty smooth, and yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like sandpaper, only worse. Yeah. For sure. <clears throat> have so, you ever um, hooked into a, a bonnet head before on the fly? I have not. I just see the, the I mean, the ones I've ever seen are usually like maybe two feet yeah. long, you know, and sometimes they just go around my legs or whatever if I'm walking in the flats and I kind of just give them a little nudge and they just go on their way. Yeah. They don't ever take a taste on you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> i'm not sure eh, if those are aggressive or not i mean some you know not all sharks They'll are sneak up on you for sure and like freak you out if you're not paying attention like, oh yeah yeah definitely. right on the edge of an oyster bed and you're like yeah right that's there, exactly but... how it is. like oh shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it'll make you make you really aware of your surroundings for sure yeah yeah i i i'm okay i mean gators and sharks i I, I really want to go fishing in Florida. I'll tell you guys, like, cause you guys have some amazing fish, but then I'm like, it, it's everything there can kill you. Like, I think just about everything. It's not Australia. It's not Australia. Yeah, he's That's right. True. It's not Australia. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. You guys have some, you know, tons of snakes that, that are poisonous. You got tons of, you know, gators and, and uh, sharks. And it just freaks you out if you're not used to it. But, the only thing I'd worry about is the gators. I wouldn't even, the snakes, I mean, I've probably run into three or four venomous snakes my whole life being outside. And yeah. The sharks, I mean, unless you go really looking for the sharks, they're not going to bother you or anything like that. Not really. Right here, yeah. yeah, see, everyone freaked out. When I when I lived in uh, Colorado, everyone freaks out about bears and mountain lions. Same thing. You know, if you're not from there, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't handle that. And they never mess with me. I go hiking, camping days on end you know pretty far back no one around and i've i've come across bears and um, seen mountain lions and and uh they just don't mess with you as long as you're being smart you know bring side on right, side arm on on you and you you know just kind of little precautionary but uh you know it never never bothered me so i get it you know if you're used to it i guess if you grow up in that area or you live there you fish there a lot less to worry about i guess but for someone that's not used to it it's like oh i don't God. know about up north but the gators down here they're definitely bold i mean you get used to it but i've been chased up the bank and they're trying to get my tarpon off the line and yeah i'm like good lord i can't believe and i've had to run pretty far back wow i don't want That's... them to eat the fish but you know if it's gonna be between me and that fish yeah i would think during mating season they're more aggressive but um and you have some people that feed them you know fish oh yeah that's the word so that's why that's what it is yeah they're just like hey you're gonna feed me i'm gonna come and get it and uh yeah, yeah. uh that's uh, stupid people <laughs> I've, I've actually <laughs> yeah, been more close to being bitten bit by a water moccasin in uh near harper's ferry mm. i mean they were swimming at us they were small but i mean like like right when i hit the water i was like there's a, a moccasin but um you know, like, it, any of that stuff can happen anywhere. And I mean, if you're in a boat, you're less likely to have to worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in some ways, if you're not careful, you know, you're checking out manatees, they can knock you over uh, easier than a gator would. I mean, with their tail, if you're just like, oh, hey, look at the nice thing. It'll, you know, it's, it's not meaning to, it's just playing with you. And there you go. Well, like in Africa, everyone, you know, is afraid of lions and stuff but the most dangerous animal is the um is hippo. The hippo. yeah yeah i guess similar thing um i i lived in florida a long time ago i was uh 10 years old i think and um yeah i i i once caught an alligator so um that you know but i was i was 10 and i was you know it bit the the bait that i was or maybe it was a fish i had on or whatever i i 
I was hooking into something I was reeling in and then it got kind of really heavy. So it might've been a mm. fish that it ate, but brought in an alligator and dropped the rod, ran back home as fast as I was 10, you know, <laughs> lost that rod, but you know, it took it back in, but yeah, uh, nothing big. I don't think it was that big. It was probably, you know, small, but I was 10. So I was freaked out, but I only lived there for like nine months or so, but yeah, good fishing. I caught an 11 pound bass while I was there. So that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely bigger than my personal best for bass, that's for sure. Well, it was conventional, so I, I kind of, you know, it was different than fly fishing, so um, it would be tough on a lure for sure. It was it was a live bait, so, you know, mm. I, was, I was a kid. I was 10, so. <laughs> well, I think you can uh, safely cut bass fishing out. You're done. You, you've got 11 pounds. That's about as high as you're Yeah, I, now I got to get an 11 pound on the fly, though, so that's, oh, that, man. that would be good, tough. Good luck. I think I think my personal best for bass is about six pounds on the fly. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. Yeah. I don't, I, on the fly, I don't think I've caught more than like a two pounder. So really in Texas? Cause I yeah. mean, so they grow pretty big there, don't they? They do. So um, where they grow big is the lakes. And a lot of times they're not accessible without a boat or a kayak. And I, I wade. Um, I don't have that. And so right. a, lot of, a lot of these lakes, especially right around me, are kind of canyon lakes. So they get really deep very quick. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some big bass, but they're, you know, in, like I said, inaccessible, especially on the fly rod. A lot of times they're a little deeper. Um, you know, in the rivers, we get um, Guadalupe bass, striped mm -hmm. bass, or not striped, I'm sorry, um, spotted, spotted bass, bass. and uh, smallmouth. Um, a couple large mouth, but the, the large mouth don't in the rivers, I don't think usually get very big. Um, what about small mouth? They, they must get pretty decent size in the, in the they rivers. They do. Um, in the rivers still though, I mean, I've seen biggest bass I've seen in the rivers is probably four, maybe five pounds. That's still good. It's great. I just, it's tough to catch them because usually there's only a handful of them in the river system. And it's, it's a bit, you know, I'm, I live near a town that's what? almost 2 million people is San Antonio. So any of the mm -hmm. rivers around here get way overfished. I mean, a lot of fishermen mm -hmm. in San yeah. Antonio. So they go out. And so these fish have seen hundreds of flies, you know, hundreds of lures, hundreds of whatever. And so they're, they're smart. Um, so it's tough to hook them. Plus the rivers around here that I fish a lot are super clear. I don't know what it is, but there's almost no muddiness in it. Um, it you know, they're spring fed a lot of them. And so it's mm -hmm. very, very clear water. So, I mean, they can see a uh, before you see them and I think that's a big issue too with it with the bigger fish they kind of they're a little smarter they've been around the block a few times you know so I it's my my fishing skills not not quite up there so. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's your fishing skills <laughs> it's it, partially yes it is but um the other part is is all that too those are all my excuses at least I'm going to hold to that <laughs> So yeah, man, um, I got to get down to Florida though. At one point I'd love to, I'd love to fish. Uh, I mean, I think tarpon is definitely one of my top, uh, bucket list fish. So, and you seem you to know come down you. during the summer and I'll guarantee it. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that in the, the, um, peacock bass, man, that's. Oh, well that's, you know, you know, I already know, you know, that, you know, I, I go out look whenever I have a bad day. And, or I've had a bad week. I'm like, man, I can't catch nothing. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just going to go to the canals and catch like 13 peacock bass. Yeah, <laughs> man, lucky you. I, I wish it was that good here. I mean, there's, there's good fishing, but it's not, there's no place that I can say I'll guarantee a bunch of fish in this size range, you know what I mean? Or, or bigger. Yeah. And um, even bass around here, you know, like I said, I can go catch tons this size, you know, like mm -hmm. hundreds of them on the river but no, it's just tough to get anything of size, you know? Um, I want to catch one of your Rio cichlids. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're beautiful. They're really cool. I mean, yeah, they they, a lot of people call them, uh, what is it? Like, uh, um, not starfish, but like, uh, um, galaxy fish or whatever, because they like their spots. I mean, it's like blue little dots all over them and they're all black. And so it looks almost like a galaxy. They're beautiful fish. Um, they don't get super big, but you know, they fight, I mean, on a two or three weight rod, my gosh, man, it'll, it'll give you a good run for your money. They're fun. So yeah, I, I like them. I like them a lot. Um, I hadn't caught any until last year when I moved here. So it was, it was fun learning it. 
Um, if you want to uh, to go for something that can be very defeating, very frustrating, go for snakehead on the fly. Yeah, I, I've well, seen I love, awesome. Yeah, I love going for snakehead on the fly. Yeah, it's it's, it, it is hard, actually. It's incredibly hard. I, I spent like a whole month just doing that. I'm like, all right, no matter what, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a snakehead on the fly. And I mean, I went to all the places where I know they would go. I went during the summer where I know they breed and I would see these monstrous I mean snakehead that it looked like their biggest snook it's crazy mm -hmm. and they they'll turn down a fly so fast mm -hmm. everyone says how aggressive they are you know they'll hit the top water throw a frog well well throw a fly at a snakehead see what happens yeah and Do they just uh, you can't more? go ahead sorry you can't use too heavy of a line like I was throwing a nine weight because I if they got in the weeds I wanted to be able to pull them out but yep. I think that nine weight tarpon just slap in the water scared them yeah uh, oh yeah, i had sure. I, I had one swirl at it like a decent one on my like first cast and um basically and and that was kind of it but you're even with a conventional mouse or conventional frog you're going to be throwing a lot you're gonna be throwing <laughs> tons and you'll have a lot of takes but they may not hook it um but yeah and i mean they don't move that much it's not like a redfish nope or like a trout that'll move like 10 feet. They will, they won't, they will sometimes charge it, but you have to get it like a carp and like a, a plate size yeah. and then they'll charge it. But also your thing, you, you know, when you see one, you want to like strip set it like that, but you got to wait oh, yeah. because they'll, they'll inhale it. And, and then you wait, 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 wait and strip. Um, yeah. you still, and they've got a bony mouth. So, I mean, you got to really like pull it. Yeah. I but use they're, um, uh, they're fun. They're super, they are a lot of fun. Yeah. And they're strong. There's, I mean, I, be honest with you, I would rather catch one of those than a redfish any day. It's just more <laughs> challenging and they just, they dig hard. They're, oh, yeah. They're super aggressive. They'll take drag like no problem. Right? I know. Oh, but so you catch a big one. It's, it's like, wow. I like to use it. I think it's called like a double barrel frog where it's got, mm -hmm. it's like a little foam frog with the two hooks on either side. Because when I set it that, when I, you know, setting that hook is way easier. So even though I'm going to strip set real hard, at least I'm like, all right, I doubled my chances here. So, and they'll go after it. I, I'm always surprised because when I first started using it, I was like, well, you know, I'll try this. I don't know if it'll really work, you know, because I've seen other people use, you know, frogs that are like this big and conventional tackle. And I'm like, man, I can't believe they eat that thing. But yeah, they'll eat, especially like on a cloudy, rainy day on a, in the summer. Oh man, they'll just, mm -hmm. all you'll see is wow, and it's on. Oh yeah. They like that. Have you ever tried day. for bowfin before, Will? Because you have them in Texas, don't you, bowfin? We have, Texas, mud we have a lot of bowfin here in Central Florida. We got lots of bowfin. Um, for I me, like no, I, ha I haven't, yeah. I haven't okay. seen any bowfin. I mean, I'm sure they're here. I just, I don't know where to look for them. They're in hey, um, slow water. I just mm. wanted to say hi. Audio is not working. You're on mute. On mute. Okay. There Sorry go. about that. No, all good, man. Yeah. Uh, my guest didn't show up yet. We were expecting a carpenter to come out. We're doing some remodeling on the house. So. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. is this John? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, John. All right. Sorry. I, it's, um, don't mind me. I, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, How's it going, nice. uh, Ryan and, and Brian? <laughs> Good, yeah. how are you? Doing well. My name is not Samsung Galaxy S8 Active, just so you know. Yeah, that's what threw me <laughs> off. I, 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 <laughs> me, so. I, uh, I have to remember to put faces with names, so don't mind me. Sorry about that, John. No, uh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so John's also in Texas. So right now we've got the right side is all Texas and the left side is all Florida. It's like kind of a debate between Florida and Texas here, I think. I don't know. Right now it seems like Florida's winning with the with the fishing. And not to mention, <laughs> not to mention you guys have our bass in your lakes too. That's, that's, that's right. true. That's because that Florida strain, boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and they've got them in Arkansas too. I mean, they've got some toads. Yeah. I, I just don't, I don't fish a lot of, you know, a lot of lakes with the fly. I mean, you can, but like in those deep waters, it's really sent it's really finicky. And I mean, they do a lot of vertical kind of jigging with those like wacky worms and, and flies just not really set up for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, we were just talking about Big Bass just a minute ago, John. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, Florida, you know, Ryan was saying he, he's caught like six pounders and stuff yeah. like that. Um, here, I mean, the biggest bass I've caught, because I mainly fish the rivers, is going to be like two pounds, I think, is roughly the biggest on the fly here. Um, I mean, I've seen some bigger ones, but do you have any spots that you, I mean, don't give away spots, I guess, on the internet, but is General there places locations. around here? Is there places yeah, around I mean, here to catch big ones? See that? Nice fish, man. Yeah. Well, it was caught in four feet of water behind my house. Oh, really? Is that yeah. uh, the river? Yeah, yeah, out here. And so, you know, uh, the, the bass, they, they can get pretty good size in these rivers. Um, the thing is, is that um, our water is so clear um it's you can yeah. you can spook them real easy That's and our holes point. are huge you know they're real long some of our holes can be you know a mile or a quarter of a mile half a mile long you know because they they back up water for so far but the water is so super clear it's easy to spook stuff <laughs> yeah yeah see well, that, that's like, the trouble i have and where i fish is you know it's very uh it's high pressured and so they're, the fish are used to seeing so many people. I mean, there's, you know, you live north of San Antonio, um, I believe, right? And so you- Well, north and west, yeah. 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 And so, you you know, I mean, there's almost 2 million people in San Antonio. And so all the, the rivers that are the common spots get way overfished. There's always people I see out on there. Um, but you, you, uh, you live a little further out. So you're able to fish some of the more kind of not, what, you know, less, less pressured areas, right? Well, yeah, that and- um... You know, a lot of the places that I can go to are also on private land, so I'm very fortunate to that. We, we don't have public lands uh, here, so you, it's just knowing people. And in my business, I work for a lot of ranches around here, so I get to know a lot of people, and I get some uh, pretty cool places to go to, so I'm very fortunate about that. Yeah, that's you definitely different. For carp on those private ponds? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of carp. In fact, nice. um, uh, one of the places I've been wanting to take Sean um the the ranch foreman he he, he shot this carp <laughs> he shot it with a rifle but the thing was as big as my fly tying table <laughs> i mean he's huge wow. big old grass carp i've seen some massive oh, he carp shot a grass here. carp oh my god yeah. that's uh that's one thing we don't have um in florida especially in northwest florida common mm -hmm. carp yeah i wish we had carp common carp yeah. too you have like a variation of grass carp kind of like further south, like Mount, like when you get to um, 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 Mount Ida or whatever that is, Lake Ida chain of lakes, they start down there. Mm -hmm. um, and they have some carp in one of the lakes, but you, the likelihood of you catching them is about slim to zero because they're either way down on the bottom or they'll come up. And I've seen some toads come up to the top but they don't hang out there for very long. They just get a you know, breath of air and then they're back down there. So to yeah, they're to, muddy fish, they like being yeah. in the, in the mud and the muck in the bottom. Um, and this I, is like I had 30 tons feet. of trouble. I mean, I caught carp out in Colorado and um, New Mexico actually um, a few times, but when I moved here, man, I just can't seem to find carp that'll touch my fly. I think another issue, like you had said, the water is so clear that I mean, it's so easy to spook them, and that's that's the other issue. It's like you know, carp are even more so than bass, very easily spooked. Oh. So, oh yeah, uh, that's my trouble. I've got to find a muddy area to fish. <laughs> or one like that's water for fish. A lot of landowners bring them in because their their private lakes get just overrun with grass, you know, or hydrilla, and so that's why they bring them in primarily, yeah. you know, just to thin that stuff out. But um, uh, yeah, we have them here in the creek behind my house where this bass came from. Um, yeah. I just never pursued carp because I always grew up thinking they were a trash fish. <laughs> <laughs> they're a blast, though. I mean, you hook into one on the fly rod. I mean, they're they're fun, man. I, I caught a 31-incher uh, on a five weight, and it took over 21 minutes to bring in. So Good grief. That, that sounds like a lot of fun. It, it's that a does. blast. I mean, it's have you caught redfish before, John? Now I've caught sea trout and I've caught some, um, yeah, I've caught some redfish, but I've caught them on conventional tackle. I haven't caught them on a fly rod. So. I find they fight similar, um, maybe a little less um, kind of runs, but they're, they're solid, heavy, you know, kind of shaped similar. Um, they eat similar, you know, a lot of times right off the bottom, you know, spooky, just like a redfish. Uh, I find they're similar in my, my experience to reds. So 
um, but they they fight you know they're they're fun for fresh water i think it's one of the harder fighting fish out there so have you ever oh, caught yeah, sure. uh, the red the red horse the sucker fish before on fly i haven't we had some but, out in uh colorado and it's super cool yeah um, i've seen some people catch them i just haven't um, yeah they're easy when they well they're not easy when they get into creeks but i mean like if if you're gonna you know euro nymph them you're gonna always hook them like you know on the head um <laughs> but if you get like a small like little like i don't know like a snail or even like something that looks like um a san juan worm and you get it down there with the weight they'll suck it up and you you can hook into them and yeah. um they're hard to see they're really hard to see even in some some of the clear water they'll they they will look like the rocks yeah um but yeah i, I mean seen some we have them in medina right oh yeah 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 so i think i've seen them i think that they're carp or small carp maybe, yeah. maybe carp and i i'm a couple of them have gotten really close and i'm like oh I, I, that doesn't quite look like a carp so i think i've seen them i just haven't had luck catching them i don't know how to how to hook you have them. to <laughs> target them or you get really lucky like some dude i know this this like has great luck he hooked one on a streamer like it it took it like not just hooked it in the side of its head like he got it down i think on the bottom and it just kind of went up to it and he hooked it and uh it was um it was a big one and you know they're in some of the rivers in arkansas um and they're beautiful i mean they you know got the red tail and that's a pretty amazing fish with a, like little um not barbs but kind of like spikes on its head they're cool fish that's awesome yeah and they fight too, like on a six weight, they're going to pull um, even yeah. one that's like eh, 12 inches, 14 inches. It's going to pull your drag on a six weight. Wow. And make you almost feel like this, uh, this rod is too small. <laughs> <laughs> like I've, that's I've, awesome. Yeah. I mean, I had like one of those Reddington crosswaters and thinking, oh man, I'm, I'm really undergunned here, but um, it, it, you those, know, are you good rods. those are good rods too. So um yeah that's a nice bass there john so that, that yeah, was I caught, I caught that bass on a brand new rod i bought oh gosh probably about 15 16 years ago wow went to when they had an awesome fly shop in austin years ago called the austin angler way back in the day and uh i've been wanting one of these particular rods and uh i tried it out it was a winston uh bl5 they don't make them anymore Okay. But I took it home uh, late, later on that weekend and caught that bass on it. So great Very way to cool. christen a, a five, an eight weight rod, you know? Yeah, man, that's that's great. I I mean, you, whenever you get a new rod, you want to catch fish on it. You want it to be a good fish. So that's like that's like the ideal right there. That's, yeah, that's amazing. That's that's. I've got bigger. the hula popper still hanging up there, right above it. <laughs> nice. What what uh? How big was that? Uh, he was about five and a half, six pounds, which is pretty good size for a creek, you know. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, uh, I thought it was actually a catfish when I saw him coming after the the bug I was fishing with. So, I mean, you know, it it's it's awesome when you see something that big. He's twenty four inches, so I mean, big big bass. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, so I've caught a I've caught an eleven pounder. I was just telling um, Ryan here, caught an eleven pounder before in Florida. I lived there. Awesome. For nine months but it was conventional it wasn't a fly rod um and i was 10 years old so um it was it was fun but it was it was on live bait so it was kind of i wouldn't say cheating but it was were uh, you using shiners i think so i was 10 so i'm no, not I, it's been a long in, time in the winter my uncle used to he was kind of like a local celebrity and uh he would freeline shiners and in, in like deep holes and i mean like dude i mean always catch a nine ten pound bass on them oh yeah i mean and some supposedly he had a like a 15 pounder now you get this story he had a 15 pounder that he put in his live well because he took to the landing um because he wanted someone to take a picture of it and he said he was in there a few minutes trying to get them out because they used to do it with a polaroid right i mean this is old this is like 80s and um Supposedly someone went in the live well and took it out of his boat. I don't believe that story. Yeah. One day, but yeah. like he, he definitely, he had, he had the fish. Like he Sounds had like a, a fish story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but he did have like a stringer. Right. So it was like a big wall mount and it had five bass and none of them were smaller than 10 pounds. Nice. Dang. 
Yeah, and so I mean, but, Florida's a place to go for big, big bass. I mean, I know here in California Texas, too. Huh? California's got some real studs they, out there in that clear they water. Do. But again, it's the same situation as Texas. I found a lot of it is like the big lakes, deep reservoirs, really deep. You know. Yeah. So I mean, on the fly, it just makes it tough. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's the trouble I found, John. Here is like, you know, there's some lakes around here that have some eight, ten, twelve pound bass in them. But how mm -hmm. do you get to them without a boat? And how do you get to them on the fly? Like, you know, a lot of times they're deeper. So. There's some techniques I was wanting to, I'm going to show you sometime. I, I used to be a subscriber to Southwest Fly Fishing. Okay. Um, and uh, there was a couple of guys uh, that showed some jig flies they, they, they made. And just like Brian was talking about, but they're, they used them out in Amistad, which is a super clear water lake. I mean, that water, it can be, <laughs> you know, 100 feet deep and you can see movement down there. I mean, it's, it's super clear water. That's awesome. Uh, but they were using like eight and eight and eight, nine and ten wake rods mm -hmm. to move these big flipping flies, they call them. And they were they were tearing it up. Were were they, they casting it or were they casting it or were they just jigging it? I think they were jigging it and they called it more of a flipping fly. I'd have to bring that article out sometime, but it's yeah. that's I always keep those old articles because it's good to have reference to go back and try tying some of their bugs that they made, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, um, but that's the thing is back in the day, they had different equipment, they had different, you know, technologies and the things that they, they learned back then um, are very helpful for today because I mean, now we've got, you know, hundreds of different fly patterns, hundreds of different, you know, thousands, maybe, you know, millions, maybe, I don't know, lots of different stuff that, you know, it almost, I wouldn't say is kind of makes it easier but it does in a way and so a bit better technology on rods and whatnot so the techniques that they learned then probably are really good to know now so that's a good idea yeah. these articles are not that old i would say maybe uh eight years old tops. Oh, okay. okay yeah so it's not like we're not talking like the 1950s or 60s or something like that but um no it, i mean it's really good information and these are guys that are uh, guides that are uh that uh guide uh, up on down the Blanco River and the San Marcos River, which are, again, uh, they have fairly heavily pressured waters, but there's enough, uh, um, you know, backcountry that they can do a lot of float trips on them, you know. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of float trips on canoes down here, so, because our yeah. water is so skinny in between the holes, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know, um, like, on the Medina, for instance, um, I go fishing with, uh, um, my buddy that has a couple kayaks. And so he's let me use them and, sure. uh, but it has to be a really low floating kayak. Some of these that have a little more, you know, belly to it kind of get stuck. And so it has to be pretty flat on the bottom. And even so you got to kind of get out and kind of pull them along at a lot of spots, but yeah, it gets super shallow at some spots. And then of course, super deep at others, but, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough for sure. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do like a float trip on, on the Lano. I hear really, really good things or devil's, oh, river. Yeah. devil's river I hear is amazing, but that you kind of yeah. have to get a guide there, right? You can't legally float it by yourself. Well, I don't know. The thing is, is um, as long as you, you can put in it like the state natural area okay. um, out there, it's just uh, to even get to it, the state natural area, you really need a four wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> the roads are pretty, pretty rough out there, pretty gnarly, sure. but it's, it's beautiful country and it's, uh, it's changing rapidly. So you need to, you need to do it before too long because it's, it's growing up even out there. Sad to say. Uh -huh everywhere there's and then we were just discussing in texas here there's a law that states that you know the landowner doesn't own the middle of the river right so you can kind of walk up and down the river legally even if there's owning on both sides except for a couple of rivers i think there's three of them where they do own the center of the river but um but here you know a lot of people will own up into it and so it's the high water mark that you you know you that starts their land but a lot yeah, of guys they it's it's kind of a, a tricky thing here in, in the state because here in texas especially because um it it <laughs> like our property line on our family ranch it runs to the middle of the creek but yeah. we can't fence the creek because yeah. every time we have a big rise it'll take that fence out but mainly the reason we put those fences 
there is to keep livestock from going upstream, mm -hmm. you know. So there'll be water gaps, uh, you know, every mile or so and uh, uh, that actually cross the creek. And it's not so much to keep people out, it's to keep our livestock from yeah. going other places, especially when the water gets low. Yeah. But um, uh, as far as tr uh, trespassing and stuff, it has a lot to do with the weather. The river is a, a navigable stream and mm -hmm. there's a lot of it that's up for interpretation in a lot of different ways. True. And so I've heard stories of people going and wading up the river, you know, and so they, they, you know, enter in at a legal spot where it's not someone's property. They park on the side of the road at a, like a bridge or whatever that is not someone's, someone's road. And then they wade up and then they go into, you know, someone's and not necessarily in someone's property if they're in the water, but, you know, they're not on the land, but then people coming out with shotguns, chasing them off. But, um, you know, I, I know that there's a couple rivers where you own into the river, but then most of them, it's, you know, the high water mark, right? That you can legally kind of walk. Yeah, and as long as you, yeah that, that, I mean, uh, what I, when I'm waiting, I don't try to, you know, bushwhack it and get out of the, out of the, sure. out of the river bottom. Yeah, as long as you got a foot in the water, you're probably okay for the most part. Yes, yeah. yes, for the most part. And, uh, you know, if people complain, then it's best to just move on instead of try to, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you don't want to argue with a shotgun in your face, so. <laughs> no, and I will tell you, uh, the thing is, is that my experience has been that a lot of the old ranching families, uh, they didn't have a problem with somebody, you know, staying in the creek, going fishing, you know, especially if they knew you, it's no big deal. Or yeah. if you ask for permission, it's all these new people that have moved out and they're just like, as soon as they move out, they put up a no trespassing sign. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, this is mine. And it's just it, the, the, the idea of uh, property has really changed a lot for because sure. of that. And, you know, I get it too, because down in uh, Corpus, for instance, you got the canals there, right? And so I used to yeah. stand on the side on the road legally, you can stand there, that's not illegal, and they didn't own the water. But I would cast to the lights, you know, in the creek, or not the creek, the um, canal, and, yeah. uh, you know, catch a bunch of nice fish. Um, you know, a lot of the reds would come in there, they eat the bait that are kind of going around the lights. Um, you know, a couple of people would come out and be like, that's my property, you can't fish it, even though you're, you know, but, but I get it, because a lot of a lot of people, you know, especially like, not so good people will come pretend that they're fishing with a, with a rod and then scout out the area, see if there's anything on their property and then kind of, you know, hop a fence and steal something from the back of their yard. So I get, I get their frustration with it, but you know, it's just kind of, it, it sucks all the way around because, you know, there's good people like me that I would never steal something from someone that are just trying to fish and legally and get harassed. But then other people that, you know, they own the property and they, they're sick of people stealing from them. So I get that too, you know. I will tell you what a good pointer is, is to, to really help uh, uh, grease the wheels, so to speak, with landowners, is if you take a, bring a trash bag with you and they see you picking up trash, yeah. hey, that's going to make a huge impression on them. And they yeah. may even go out of their way to get to know you in that way. Hey, and make it, maybe make it easier on you and some friends to go fishing sometime. Absolutely. Yeah. That's always a good point. When, um, uh, there's a, a longtime subscriber. I've fished with them a couple times. Um, you've seen him on a couple videos. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, old guy, he, uh, he, I went to Utah, fish with him. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you've seen those videos, but um, he, uh, he, he talks about that all the time. His, one of his things that he does is he brings a bag with him. And he always, every time he goes, he tries to bring as much, you know, trash back home with them as he can. Um, it's always a good idea because, I mean, you know, I mean, generally it's not our responsibility, but in a way it is because, you know, yeah, yeah, we didn't throw the trash there, but if we can make it better, then, you know, and that's the whole point of this, you know, a lot of people have problems with people fishing, um, you know, a lot of people have problems with, you know, uh, you know, animal rights activists or whatever it may be, hurting fish or taking them home and eating them if we do that. But if we're making it better, while we're fishing, I think that that goes a long way to um, making majority of people happy with, you know, with it or kind of appeasing, you know, some of these uh, groups, you know, so um, yeah. yeah, we want to keep it the ability to fish as long as we can where laws don't come in and keep us from doing it. So that's a good way yeah. for sure. Good thinking. Yeah, I think doing that really helps. Um, uh, there's another guy that uh, posts a lot of videos on here. Uh, 
uh, Alvin Dedeau. He's from Texas and great, oh, yeah. great, great fly fisherman. I, in fact, he's the one I bought that BL5 from way back in the day when he was working at Austin Angler. And I doubt that he remembers that, but I mean, he's just a really cool guy. It, and it, that, he, guides, he guides the, the, um, the Devil's River, right? I think I've yeah, seen he, does, he does that. He just guides everywhere pretty yeah. much. Um, but yeah, and he, he's a really cool guy, really easygoing. And they just, they uh, in fact just recently had a big deal on the Colorado River where he guides a lot. They just picked up trash. Nice. Yeah. You know, I mean, just, I mean, it's good to, to do those kind of things and just leave an impression on people that we're not here to mess up their place. Yeah. You go to a river crossing in our part of the world, there's graffiti and broken glass everywhere. And it's horrible. it's really a shame, you know? I, I always find it surprising in Texas being a big gun area where pretty much almost every single person owns a gun. I mean, not everyone, but, you know, a lot of people do. How much crime that there is. Like, if I'm going to break into someone's house or steal something from someone or break into their car or whatever, I'm not going to do it in a place where the chance of them owning a gun and shooting me is 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 high. If I'm going to be a, cr a criminal, I'm going to go to like California where I can, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, to me, you'll, that's you'll get shot out there too, especially in Southern that's California. True. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baseball oh, oh, bat, oh, whatever it may be, but, <laughs> but you get my point. I mean, it's like, it yeah, just, exactly. you know, but yeah, the, the crime, I mean, it's crazy, especially in like around San Antonio, what we were talking, it's like, it's so busy and you're right. You know, you go to a crossing and it's like graffiti, trash, some questionable people almost every time and it, it's a little freaky sometimes yeah so i feel yeah, yeah it's good to pick up in fact maybe uh i don't know maybe we could try to schedule something this doesn't apply to the florida people because i'm not going out to florida to pick up trash but maybe um <clears throat> all of my subscribers in this area maybe we can schedule a day to go do like a trash cleaning along a river yeah. or something we'll all yeah. kind of video it and have a good old time trying to encourage more people to do that i think that's a good good thing so yeah i i think it's great for the um for people that are in this uh that do this as a hobby that it leaves a good impression on landowners that we care yep. you know yep. it's just like uh when you're hunting you want to make sure that you harvest the deer correctly you know you don't want to harvest yearlings or, or whatever yeah um you know and i think that really helps you know uh several years ago I uh, was in New Mexico with some family members and we went fishing on a particular little river that had really poor access. It was south of Taos, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And the river happened to, uh, to run right past this guy's house. And we just drove up there and asked him if we'd go fishing. And sure enough, I mean, just as nice a guy as you could ever Just knock on his door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, and he was just as nice as can be. And we ended up visiting with him for about an hour or so before we even went fishing. Because... So, I mean, sometimes if you just do that, it's, you'd be surprised, you know? Yeah. I always worry. I, you know, I want to do something like that, but like, I always worry because that's kind of trespassing to get on their property and knock on their door. So True. what I, I, you know, what is the best way of doing that? I mean, is it okay? You know, and you're a landowner in Texas, you kind of know it. If someone was to just kind of walk onto your property, knock on your door and be like, Hey, I've got a fly rod. I'm playing on fishing. Can I fish your, you know, the area um, mm -hmm. that wouldn't bother you? Well, I think it depends on how they approach you. I think the first way to disarm a person is wave at them and have a smile on your face. I mean, if you if you come up to them wearing sunglasses and a frown, I think that's a good way to get shot. <laughs> have a sidearm you know? on you. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to let you me know, fish your so river. No, I'm just kidding. Um, don't do that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, um, but that's always something that I worry. But again, I'm not from Texas originally. So being here only two years, I mean, everywhere you go, there's kind of a different kind of vibe with, you know, how people are used to like in Colorado, the law states, you can legally walk through someone's property. If you can't access like a river or a hunting ground, like if they're blocking it, so they can own all this. But if there's hunting ground on the other side of their property, and the only way through is through their property you don't have to ask technically you should but you don't have to yeah. you can just walk right through and then go you know to the hunting ground as long as you're not shooting in their property right um or yeah. fishing ground or whatever um but there there's a lot of BL, what they call blm land 
And so it's a lot of, you know, state owned land that that you can be at. It's not all private uh, versus in Texas. It is mostly private. It's hard to find state land. Um, so it, it's again, it's it's kind of it's it's tough to when you're new somewhere, it's tough to na navigate the the certain ways that people do things in in certain areas, you know, so yeah. good, yeah. good to always know. Um, how is it in Florida? I mean, is there a lot of state land or is it mostly private? Luckily for me, the whole area that's like about 45 minutes east. Well, it's not really a place anymore. It, it is, but it isn't Mexico beach that got leveled by hurricane Michael. If you're about like 30 minutes east of that until two hours Southeast in Cedar key, it's all federal land. Wow. And there's no, there's no sky rises. There's no condos right on the water. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it's very nice. I mean, it's like federally protected land. They can't sell it. I mean, I guess they could, and they, they probably would if they could, but um, a lot of it's protected and you don't have a lot of development on it. In other words, and um, there are certain areas where you can actually see old Florida, like old Cracker, Florida, like Spring, um, uh, Spring Creek. It's like what Florida used to be about 70 years ago. And sometimes you even see like the old Florida, like South Florida, like Lauderdale with the cinder block houses that are painted. So you kind of, you still see some of that in the areas. And if you talk to those people, like I don't pay at the ramp. Um, I talked to the, they, there's a lot of commercial guys there. But I kind of disarm them. I'm like, man, this is like old Florida. You know how Florida used to be. And that's good and bad to them, right? But it's like, oh, this is what, you know, I remember Florida used to be when I was a kid. And it's just, it's kind of natural. And, you know, and so um, there's that. But I mean, you also have your renegades that will shoot you if you go on your land. This is just like some real freaks. But uh, I don't have that problem a lot. Um, if I was hunting, it would be a lot different. For but sure. like fishing, like again it's federally protected land so if somebody wants to argue it's their spot or their water and say well you're a lot you know like no not really not really because yeah. i'm about mm, 500 yards away from the um the shoreline and I, I guess it could you know if it's low tide and that water's there but again like that's not an issue because there's very it, it's sparsely populated in certain yeah. areas is that the same in kind of more south part of Florida where you're from? Uh, well, I I go mostly to like parks or, you know, protected land in general. So like I'm going to go to like the Merritt Island Seashore Reserve. I go there a lot and it's just my miles and miles of protected land. So yeah. it is a more heavily like fished area, but, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people just fish areas where they can just drive up, pull their car over and fish. Um, but there's plenty of areas where if you really just get out of your car and walk, mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of little nooks and crannies and stuff. And, you know, there's there's nothing out there. You're not going to see any houses or you know, you're going to see trash from here or there from people who might have fished there, you know, pick it up, throw it away. Um, but, you know, there's there's lots of areas. And I mean, freshwater people. I mean, here in Florida, you know, they always talk about if it's a puddle, there's like a five pound bass in it. And there's little, you know, there's there's little ponds and stuff all over the place. Are you going to find a lot of, you know, like places that say, you know, no trespassing, you know, no fishing, no boating, blah, blah, blah. You are, you know, but, it, you know, if you, you know, if you use the GPS and you look around and, you know, you decide, okay, you want to fish in this type of general area and you pick like, you know, maybe a a 10 mile radius or something like that you drive around and you die you're gonna find places that are okay i and me personally me i mean i drive all over the place mm -hmm. and just because i can I'll, I'll drive to the west coast i'll drive to the east coast i'll i'll drive all the way down to south florida you know i'll drive just wherever and you know so i because i want to fish for everything you know yeah. so, but i i do find lots of you know public land areas and i know that florida is not exactly well known for that but we do have it for sure yeah. cool yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Texas isn't super known for their public land either. It's mostly mostly owned, right? But I mean, there's some good. Um, I just went to, uh, what is it, Pertinala State Park, and that was gorgeous. You know, really, really beautiful water. And um, so there's stuff around here, but, you know, it's, uh, 
it's kind of a similar situation. There's a lot of no trespassing signs, but there's also, if you, if you look around and you go to the right spots, a lot of times you got to pay at some of these parks to be able to park there, but it's like five bucks, not a big deal. Um, there's some good stuff, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I definitely pay like, I don't know, whatever the, it's like, I don't know, 40 bucks a year to have them, you know, your annual, you know, pass to whatever park. You know, and some of the parks actually don't even require that. You just have to go online, you know, agree to read the rules, say yes, and print out the license, you know, for that year. And that that's it. As long as you have your state license, they don't even require anything else. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And some I, places you can fish after dark. It just depends on the um, on the place. Like there's a like the closest lake to me. It's a state park. But if you want to go out there and fish all night, you can. Cause there's a lot of dudes that they get off work late and they go out there like this time of winter and they start speckled perch fishing because mm -hmm. they come in near the shore. So they're, they're out there late, but not every park has to do it. So, um, you can check, you know, I, I don't know if like St. George Island does it, which is pretty good fishing, um, out there, but I don't know if they allow it or like the park in Destin, I forget what it is, but there's a state park there and you can walk the beaches, but they may or may not allow you to stay there after after hours because some have a gate key or you know yeah most most the ones i in. know yeah that you can't yeah. stay after dark yeah. it, it yeah. literally says parks, like yeah. open from dusk till dawn or something like that you know yeah yeah the but, park at destin's really nice my wife and i were able to avoid the crowds <laughs> mm -hmm. it is we really enjoyed that it's nice and 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 surf fishing in destin can be a little bit uh a little bit tricky but what's cool about it is you can see the fish you know, oh, yeah. you know it's kind of like blind casting mm -hmm. which is okay but you know it's cool it's cool if you can see things coming oh of course of course it's beautiful water beautiful water it is I've, I've never really easy. fished that area much um except for offshore yeah yeah bottom humping offshore but um you know i'd like to i'd like to go try the uh you know all that that water at some point so oh, that's awesome yeah, I got to get out to Florida. I mean, at one point, I mean, I, I like Texas and all it's good fishing, but I, you know, good. there's some species that we don't have that you guys have. So I got to, I got to get me a peacock bass. I got to get me a tarpon. We, we have them, but it's hard to find. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got to get down there. I just uh, trying to find time. So maybe hopefully next year, next year, I think that's going to be my goal is to make a trip to, to Florida and try to catch some. And I'm going to, I'm gonna call you you two up. That's fine. You can. Take I don't. I've got people down in South Florida. If you uh, if you want to go, like you know, catch the um, what do they call them the um, the knife clownfish or whatever. You oh, catch, I catch those. Yeah. Yeah. I catch you catch those on the fly, but it's a lot of like slow stripping with a clouser on the bottom, from what I've always heard. But because a lot of dudes catch them on uh, minnows. Yeah, um, there you catch them the easiest, definitely on live bait for sure. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you catch some some big peacocks. I don't know if you uh, if um, you've seen that dude uh, Ryan. His name's uh, um, Big Mike on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a little I short dude, see. man. He caught a nine oh, yeah. pounds, a nine something ounce uh, peacock. That's just yeah. a, just an actual. I think the state record for peacock bass was just broken recently too. Yeah, he broke it. Oh yeah. He oh, was broke it? It. oh yeah, it was him. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, I think he I saw broke it I, twice. I think I saw the picture. I was like, good lord, man. I didn't even know they got that big because I mean you they get big, but to hold that much weight, you got to catch a really big one. Yeah, because you can catch five and six pounders. Yeah. Uh, somewhat regularly, but a nine pounder, eight pounder. No, that's yeah. an unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. And they've been in the system for like 30 or 40 years. So it's not unlock, it's not unheard of, but um and a lot of people, I don't know if they catch them and uh, if they release them or eat them, but um, I've heard they're good. I don't know. I don't, I've never had it myself. I've tried it either. There's but, a country that people go to to specifically fish for them. And I, is it Argentina or Costa Rica? Venezuela. Venezuela. You can do it in Venezuela and, and, and yeah. all those countries. And I mean, they, they get massive. They're 30, yeah. 40 pounds. And yeah, because they they the, yeah, oh, here we only have one uh, species of peacock bass, but over there okay. they have like three or four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the difference is the ones where you guys are the smaller ones and the ones there are bigger. Well, actually, we have species. the medium size. There's uh, we have what they call the butterfly peacock bass, that's okay. a medium yeah. size one. They have a smaller one and then beautiful. two larger ones, yeah. Okay. And you can also, I mean, 
catching Mayans and the other invasives are fun too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like the Jaguars, Mayans and, cichlids, and, and the yeah. Oscars with their little sharp teeth. I mean, those things, they fight hard. And if you catch up, what is it? The Jaguar, Ryan? Yeah, I like yeah. that. To know and too. they can get big. I mean, all those oh, yeah. invasives are, are fun to catch. And they're on a six weight. I mean, you, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll dig. And, you got these uh, little like orange fish down there. I think they call them red devils. Yeah. I like catching those or the uh, Midas cichlids. They got like, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, 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 those. Yeah. Those can pull surprisingly enough. Oh, I bet. I mean, I, I think those are not as cool as like the parrot fish that you catch like in the Caribbean or on the no, same shells, no, but like there. they're still really beautiful fish. Yeah. Like so almost as beautiful color. as that Rio cichlid that you guys have. Yeah. I, I, maybe yeah. more. I mean, Rios are gorgeous, but you know, they're black with blue spots, which is really cool. But I mean, some of those that you guys have there, like, like you just said, the parrot fish and whatever. I mean, some of those colors that they got is phenomenal. Even peacock yeah. bass, I think, are just absolutely well, they're beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. 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 And they're not hard to catch and they're super aggressive. I mean, they'll, yeah. you know, they will swirl. I mean, top water is awesome, but you know, a simple clouser or a tiny um um a micro game changer, just strip it as fast as you can. I mean, that will that will bust up anything down there. Well, yeah, I say use any kind of bright color. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You guys fish an eight weight with them, or is it lighter? I, I like to use a six weight for yep. everything in freshwater. Anything and everything in freshwater, I don't think you need more than a six weight. Okay. The only reason I throw an eight weight is because uh, when I do bass fishing, unless I'm throwing a Todd's wiggle minnow, I like to throw big poppers. Yes. And I just I don't I don't like you know waste like hurting my arm like chucking <laughs> with a six weight because I've got I know dudes that were like smally just smally freaks and they were throwing like 10 inch you know game changers on like a six weight and it's like why are you doing that man like throw an eight throw a nine throw a 10 but um yeah he's got tennis elbow now so uh <laughs> he only he only fishes with his conventional gear now in the off seasons because he oh. blew it out you know just I, being, being i a felt cloud. like that my last trip going for redfish it was super windy and it was just all i could do is back cast so i'm going this way with it i'm not you know it's not over you know this way and so because the wind was blowing this direction so if i went this way i'd nail myself in the back of the head so it's all back backwards like this and i had to like really power it as hard as i could um every cast and so many casts were just i mean it would blow it right back in my face you know um but uh, or i just wasn't landing correctly so i probably made a thousand casts over that you know this last weekend when i went and it i yeah i still it's like popping it's like uh, every <laughs> you know it, it just i threw it out um i'll be fine soon but um yeah <laughs> man i can't imagine like i just you know those that's are, an eight week the though. days when you just say i'm, I'm not fishing like it, well it, yeah. but it was good fishing i mean oh, i get it i get it yeah. that's tarpon fishing for you yeah throw your uh throw your um you know little fly in 30 mile an hour wind 25 feet you know yep yeah i mean i got two uh uh sorry four reds total that trip so uh, you know uh two or three of them in slot size so yeah it was uh it was good fishing but it was tough, tough conditions, cold, rainy. So, but that's sometimes that's the best, you know? Oh, yeah. So. yeah Aransas sure. Pass. Did you end up going to Aransas Pass? Area? No, I, um, so I went uh fish pass, if you know where that is, um, down in between Aran. Uh, so in between, uh, uh, Cor uh, the Island of Corpus. Oh, uh, Packery Channel. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of in that area. So, um, there's a special area that I go. I'm not going to say yeah, sure. where, but um, it's really nice. It's flats. And so um, you just kind of, I mean, it's it's all like this deep. I mean, there's a couple spots that are a little deeper, but mostly it's this deep. You can see them in the water. Um, it's gorgeous. And um, I mean, they're just all over there. You know, you see them thrashing bait and stuff. This last trip was hard to see in the water because it was cloudy. So there was no sun shining in, but um, it's fun. Um, and that's one of my favorite spots. If we go, we ever go john i'll take you to that spot because i mean it's a walk i would like to go there that would be yeah. fun it's it's um, a good two mile walk to the spot but um from where you can park but it's it's worth it so i'll make sure to bring my off spray yes uh yeah <laughs> dude uh, well this time of year there was none but yeah just a couple, like two months ago when it was hot it was uh oh, it was man. horrible worst i've ever seen was mosquitoes i probably came back with over 100 bites so 
I don't know well, about know, Brian. I know, I know like some... Here we get no seams real bad. Oh yeah, the really tiny ones. Yeah, yeah those things are awful. Yeah. Awful. yeah. Oh, you know, and the horse flies in the creeks. Yeah. Yes. Actually, too. during the summer, the horse flies are horrible. Oh, yeah. We get those, oh, yeah. too. I always worry hurt. with they the hurt. diseases. Yeah, they hurt and the diseases that they bring. I mean, they have, like, what is it called? T- starts with a T. T- 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 I forgot the name of it, but um, I always worry about those. But um, we had some down there. I don't know if you've seen them going down to the Gulf, but I saw some mosquitoes. I kid you not, like, this big. They, I thought they were... Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they, I thought they were like uh, moths or something. I was like, what? I thought it was a bee <laughs> or whatever. And it was a mosquito. Like, it was nuts. I've never seen anything like it. And those things hurt, man. Oh, oh man. my gosh. Yes. I thought I was getting, you know, stung by bees, but yeah. Was, <laughs> They're bad. I remember one time my friend and I were fishing late summer in a creek and it was like gnats. And they just, it was so, so many of them, it was dark. Up in and your they nose. wouldn't go and like the only way that we got out of them and those those they followed us like i'm not kidding oh, you yeah. like we were in a gnu and we were trying to outrun them on a gnu <laughs> with like a 15 horsepower and they're flying behind us like it's a, a dark cloud just following <laughs> us eye level until we got about a mile offshore they gave up yeah gosh yeah the, the, you know fly fishing can be uh i wouldn't say dangerous but it can be can be challenging at times with uh you know we were talking earlier about alligators and sharks and you got bugs and stinging crap and all this stuff i mean it's just like there's always something that's gonna always something that can mess with you whatnot yeah the what stingrays oh yeah i yeah those those can get you for sure that's probably actually one of the more dangerous things down here uh, more so than sharks, I would say, you know, because those... I mean, I'd say that in general, I'm, I, I see way more stingrays than sharks here in Florida. Yeah, yeah, I see them all the time, for sure. So I think, I don't know why this thing's letting us go so much longer, but um, you, it said 40 minutes, but now it's saying it's letting us go, which is great. However, I hate to do <laughs> it, but I do have to, my, my family's coming back, um, so I've got a few things I got to do before they get home, but I do got to go, but it's been great chatting with you guys and um we'll set up next month um you know i'll try to give you guys a little more heads up because i know this time it was kind of just like a rush thing but um i had a few people that um could only do sundays um but they still didn't make it so um you know (laughs) (laughs) so anyway um but we'll we'll try uh next month i'll try to do a little more heads up but with the holidays it was kind of like couldn't figure out where to go with it and what time everyone's kind of, you know, we're all, we've got stuff going on at every single one of us. So uh, next mm-hmm. month, it should be a little easier. I'll try, but let's uh, message back and forth and figure out a good time for all of us. Um, and we'll, we'll set it up next month and try to do this once a month if you guys can make it. So I got a sure. quick question. If, yeah. if it would be, um, if ever, if you'd be down for it and everyone else to do like a, um, a tie session, yeah, you know, it's like we pick up. I'm fly not gonna lie, we... I do not tie flies. You do? I've seen some that you tied. I mean, not yes, but that was like a year ago plus. Okay. <laughs> well, there's no judgment here, so do your best. You know, it's, it's and it, listen, it's... I a lot of the flies I use, they're three materials. Like that's it, <laughs> and they catch fish. Like I swear, like his his flies are far better than mine. Oh. Um, and I I I I love his, but like. You don't need like the beauty. You can catch redfish oh. on like three patterns. Oh, of course, Absolutely. yeah. I yeah. just I I don't know. I don't have the patience or something. Or you don't need it, too yeah. much I, 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 I don't either. know what it is. I, I did neither, and then I I realized I I'm never gonna tie game changers really, and I love them. <laughs> I love them. Love them. Like that's yeah. why I think. But I'll, I'll pay him <laughs> to do it. I will because I know they're gonna look better. But like, yeah, we could do a simple shrimp fly, and it's. It's easy. You probably catch bass on it too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm down. I'm down for that. Maybe one of these sessions, we'll just do a straight up tying. I'll try to figure out how to get a camera over there and connect online because that's the trouble. Is tr- I mean, I've got a good camera, but it's not. It doesn't you know? It's not my computer camera, so I don't know how to do that really. But I'll try to figure it out, um, and then we can all kind of you know video ourselves. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, speaking of you know um flies that aren't necessarily that pretty it doesn't matter fish don't care like i've no, i've always noticed really like when i'm selling flies i'm not selling flies just specifically to catch fish i mean they will catch fish 
I, I got to sell to the fishermen, you know, I'm selling, I'm, I'm buying the fishermen, I'm not buying the fish, you know, and so that's the, that's the thing. And it, you know, I've noticed, though, you know, with a fly, I've tied flies where I'm like, eh, you know, I, I will still catch fish with them. But sometimes you've got that kind of confidence in something that you know, looks better. And so sometimes that confidence does move on to how well you catch fish with it, because if you're not confident with the fly, you, you know, you might not be fishing as well. You might, you know, trade out to another fly quicker or whatever. You might not catch as much, but um, absolutely no question. You do not need custom special tied flies oh, from me or anyone hell no. else to catch hell no. fish. Um, I, I mean, you can nice, verify that for but, me, so yeah, no. Exactly. And so, <clears throat> you know, that's the thing. I mean, you can just tie, you know, just simple, like you said, three material flies and you're going to catch fish. I mean, it's not, you know, I know people that literally just, you know, put on just a strip of rabbit fur and that's it. They don't do anything else. Um, just tie that on and they're catching fish left and right. So mm-hmm. you don't need it, you know? So, uh, but you know, I'm happy to sell them if you guys want pretty flies. So. <laughs> but I want games you already games. tie all my flies. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I, I really appreciate that, man. And, uh, you know, I tell you, I, I love seeing all the, the, the fish pictures that you send me on the flies that I, I tie. I mean, it's, I don't do it just to make money. I do it. It's enjoyment. I like seeing other people catch with my fish and all right with my flies, catch fish with them. And um, I, I, I really enjoy that. So thanks, man. But of course, yeah, it's been, it's been great guys. Um, I will, uh, I'll let you guys know for, for next month and uh, we'll try to, like I said, I'll give you like a two or three week, hopefully heads up this time. So this time around. So sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Peace out. Take care. Holidays. See you guys. Bye, guys.